How does living in emotional hurt ruin my relationship? Well, this is uh, when we talk about living in emotional hurt, what we're talking about is living in the unfelt hurt of our childhood rather than experiencing and releasing the unfelt hurt so it no longer controls us. The problem with living in the hurt or keeping the hurt within oneself is that it defines all of our belief systems. Yeah. It, 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 it controls what we believe. Mm -hmm. It affects our pessimism it, about life and it affects every decision and choice we make. It really affects how we see reality, doesn't it? It does. We perceive things to be real that God knows are completely unreal. And we perceive things to be unreal that God knows are completely real. Mm -hmm. so, so it has a terrible effect on our life if we do this. Okay. And I suppose, again, we need to go through what are the, you know, the why we do why it. Do it. Why yep. we do it. Yep. We do it. Yep. Okay, well, it causes me to justify to myself unloving, untruthful and arrogant behaviour with my partner. Yes. So if I want those things, I'm going to want to live in my hurt, aren't I? Yes, a person who's living in their hurt basically justifies their hurt mm -hmm. to the world. Yep. So what they do is they're basically saying to the world, I had this hurt when I was a child and everyone around me now needs to make it go away. And everybody now needs to know that I've had it. And everybody needs to know how bad it was. And everybody has to feel how bad it was with me. And everybody, you know, and we've yeah. got this long list of demands that we're basically making to everybody in the world. Yeah. And of course, our partner being our closest companion yeah. is the person who's receiving most of them most of the time, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Okay. Living in emotional hurt causes me to unfairly blame my partner for my own emotional hurt. Yes. When I live in my emotional hurt, I almost believe that my partner has caused it. Mm -hmm. Even though intellectually I possibly know that my childhood has caused it, yeah. I, I almost believe that my partner should make it go away. Mm -hmm. And therefore I'm basically blaming my partner for its cause. And also, isn't there the issue where I might be having an interaction with my partner who something in that interaction triggers some of that hurt and I'm living in that hurt, blaming everyone else for it? Well, can I point out that any truthful belief will trigger the hurt because mm -hmm. every one of the emotions and beliefs of the hurt self is actually false. Yeah. They're actually false beliefs. Yeah. They're actually unloving beliefs. Yeah. So any truthful statement by my partner, mm -hmm. any acceptance of God's truth and God's love by my partner will cause me to believe that my partner is being unloving to me. So I'm going to blame them. <laughs> and I'm going to blame him for it. For exposing, just for, for being the way that they are, for well, being no, truthful. Well, no, I'm actually blaming him for disagreeing with me. I want my partner, whoever that is, to agree that my hurt was real and my hurt was matters and my hurt this and my hurt, and very selfish it is. Yeah. And when my partner says, well, this is not how, is it God from God's perspective? I will get intensely rageful with mm -hmm. him or her mm -hmm. about them making those kind of statements. Yeah. yeah. So this is very destructive for my relationship because it's going to trigger a whole heap of addictions, unloving behavior, a whole heap of evil behaviour in the end yeah. towards my partner if I remain in this hurt. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, living in my emotional hurt places the demand upon my partner to ignore my emotional injuries and to satisfy my emotional demands. Correct. Yeah. So this is where I'm starting to create evil now. Yeah. I'm starting yeah. to use my emotional hurt as a justification for my actions towards my partner yeah. and a justification of trying to demand from my partner that they do certain things for me that love would not demand. Mm -hmm. Only injury and unloving behaviour would demand it. Yeah. And, and when I'm doing this to my partner, I'm destroying, I'm harming my partner's condition. I'm harming their concept of love of self, yeah. but I'm also harming my own soul further yeah yep 
So this is not the way to handle your hurt self. No. <clears throat> and it's sad, isn't it? We, we know people who are very, very caught up in the hurt that was done to them in childhood, mm -hmm. but they're not feeling it. They're no. expecting their environment, their partner to take responsibility for it. Yes. To that, or as you mentioned earlier, almost blame their partner when their partner expresses any truth yes. about the, their situation and their responsibility now for to their To feel pain. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which is also a truth. Yeah. And they, they wander around um, kind of expecting their entire environment to commiserate yes. with this hurt. And that is a sure sign that they're not feeling their hurt and that they're wanting to avoid it. Yes. Yeah. They want their addictions met with regard to this hurt. Yeah. So, and part of their addictions is to hold on to seething resentment. That's yeah. one of their addictions, to hold on to the hatred of the people who caused the problem and to hold on to seething resentment with society, the world, God, everyone. Everyone is in the firing line here generally yeah. and uh, very destructive to a relationship, of course. Yeah. Very hard to hold on to a relationship with a person who's doing that. And it's, and it's also very frequent that these kind of people suppress their rage and therefore go into depression. Yeah. And so these kind of people become high maintenance, high management mm -hmm. relationship people yeah. where they either revert to manic depression or, or which is codependent depression with spirits mm -hmm. involved or depression itself, mm -hmm. which is just the suppression of their internal rage and anger with the world and all with things generally or schizophrenia where they now have spirits influencing all of their decisions and they can blame spirits for their unloving yeah. behavior and so forth yeah. a lot of these mental illnesses are the result of a person in this state and actually um, harm the people around them quite intensely yes including their own children yeah quite yeah. badly yeah yeah so that in this state a person actually wants from their relationship for their partner to be responsible for their emotional Of pain. course. Yeah. They yep. want their spirits, God, their partner, any person they meet on the street to be responsible for their emotional, emotional hurt. hurt. They want God, their partner, their children, any person they meet on the street yeah. to feel their emotional pain. Yeah. Before they feel any of it of their any of their own. Yeah. Yeah. They want their partner, God, the world, their children, to be responsible for cheering them up and making them happy and, and yeah. doing everything they want. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Very selfish people. Yeah. Very destructive people yeah. with regard to relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Very common, unfortunately. It is. Um, so let's now talk, I mean, it's fairly obvious how this is detrimental to mm. one's partner relationship, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's run through some of the specifics of that course. we've listed. So when we live in our hurt in this way, yep. we end up punishing the people around us yes. for it. And we've said this yes, earlier. So we're basically mm. saying you're to blame for what somebody else did to me. Yes. That's what we're doing. How unfair is that? It's very unfair. <laughs> and we're missing the point that the cause of all of our pain comes from our childhood. It comes from this, what this other person did before I met this person. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This, what, what this other person did before I met you caused my pain and yet I'm blaming you for it and punishing you for it yeah. and punishing you when you don't share in it. Yeah. Like even me wanting you to share in it. Yes. How, how bad is that? It's like I have all this pain inside of myself and to be happy I need you to have, be in the same amount of pain that I'm in. Yes, yeah, terrible. Whoa, very dark emotion, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Very dark emotion. And obviously it's going to have a fairly repelling effect on your partner if you're behaving in that way. Of course. Yeah. Sooner yeah. or later your partner's not going to be able to tolerate that behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're going to seek distance e uh, emotionally, physically, or just end the relationship. Yeah, this is one of the main reasons why men go fishing. Yeah, like, <laughs> because he doesn't want to feel the the unexpressed or expressed hurt, living in hurt yeah. partner. Yeah, and yeah. all he does, all he wants to do is get away from her. Yeah, and it's another reason why uh, women encourage their daughters to have emotionally incestuous relationships with, with their, their fathers. fathers because the woman doesn't want to deal with the emotional projection coming from her husband all the time and she's happy if the little girl deals with some bees the shoulder to cry on and Correct. absorbs some of the pain and all yeah. of those kinds be of daddy's things. favorite and everything yeah and yeah. vice versa with the mummy with her son yeah exactly yeah. the same yeah causes terrible problems in in your entire life 
but also causes a severe degradation of your own condition again. Yeah. This, you know, people who live in their childhood hurt become people who stay in the hills for many, many years, many justifying years. their cruel punishment and behaviour towards other people. Yeah. 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 Okay. So when we live in our hurt, we impose the qualities and nature of our hurt emotional beliefs onto our partner's gender. Yes. Uh, about my partner's gender, rather onto my partner. partner's gender, and also any children that I have of the same, the same gender. gender. So maybe if we just expand that a bit, because I muddled saying it. Yeah. So I'm living in my hurt. Yes. And so uh, with regard to how my the opposite sex has treated me, or, or my the partner's, same. yeah, the, the, my partner's gender has treated me. Yeah. So I could be in a homosexual or heterosexual relationship, yep. but I'm living in all my hurt about my, how my partner's gender has treated me. Treated me. So then I am going to project onto my partner yep. that they are all of my hurt beliefs about that gender. Correct. I'm going to project onto my partner and say, you're exactly like that. Correct. And you're bad because of this, or you're going to act like this because of yep. some hurt I'm holding on And even if you don't say it, you're going to believe it. Yep. You're going to not be able to trust them. You're not going to be able yep. to open to them. You're not going to be able to, you know, sincerely express yourself emotionally to them because you're living in this hurt. Yeah. And again, this is something that is so incredibly common, isn't it? We see this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Now let's flip it around. When I allow my partner to, to live with me. in their hurt rather than dealing with it, yes. I allow them to take their hurt out on me. Yes, which is not loving yourself. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge issue with regard to love of self. Yep. If you allow a person to take all of their emotional hurt out on you when you have not been the cause of it, mm -hmm. then, then that is very, very unloving to yourself. And God can't agree with that. You need to get out of that relationship quick, smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, because to love yourself, you have to. Yeah. Or you need to address it quite strongly with your partner. Yeah. You need to. You need to. Your partner needs to stop doing it to you. Yeah. He has to stop doing it to you if you're ever going to have a decent relationship. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. All right, and uh, I mentioned this one earlier. When either of us in the partnership live in our hurt, or both of us. <laughs> we are going to have a distorted viewpoint of reality. Yes. We're going to see everything through the filter, if you like, of, of, our, hurt. of our past unfelt hurt. Yes. And it will colour. We everything. won't even be in touch with reality from God's perspective. Yes. What we believe is happening yes. is and, not and necessarily And happening. it's really weird how it affects people because they think things are safe that are completely unsafe. They think things that are happy are complete, yeah. that are completely like, oh, if you looked at it, you'd... <laughs> cry almost yes. just looking at it you know yeah. they they believe things are in their welfare when it's totally the opposite yeah. you know they, they believe that they're doing a good thing when they're doing terrible things they believe they're doing terrible things when they do good things yeah it's very <laughs> you know true. it's really that's a huge distortion of reality on their mm -hmm. part and because of that they engage in a lot of very unloving behavior yeah. as a result of the distorted reality they can't they can't see themselves properly or their partner properly and they certainly are not capable of having a relationship with the real self of their partner or themselves and and as a result it's, it's just a terrible like it's very unusual for these kind of relationships to last long mm -hmm. but when they do the partner has to have a severe amount of lack of love of self yeah. to allow it and I, I've been in a relationship like that where I allowed a severe with a severe lack of self a lack of love of self. I allowed that kind of behaviour for many, many years, mm -hmm. and and it and in the end, once I realised what I was doing, I had to leave, of course. But but I, I see many codependent pe people staying in those relationships for very long periods yeah. of time. Yeah. But it is very painful, very painful. And it ends up affecting the self worth, like of you the, said, the yeah. lack of love. Of, you've got the lack of love of self, but your worth is continually on the receiving end yeah because the person is blaming you or expecting you to absorb their hurt all the time and yeah you know i've been depressed in, all the time down all the time yeah. in spirit influence all the time projecting at you a whole heap of things that are not true all the time yeah it's just it's just a constant battle to even stay in harmony with truth in yeah. that kind of a relationship yeah. on the receiving end of it yeah. and and you know if you're staying in that kind of relationship i suggest to people then you've got severe lack of love of self issues to address. Yeah. And once you address them, you'll never stay 
you won't stay. So this is the kind, of, and the person who's doing it, you're destroying your relationship. Mm -hmm. You're destroying it. Like, there's no way that a person who loves themselves can live with you yeah. while you do this. Yeah. You've got to work through your hurt in a more proactive way, a way that doesn't harm other people. And the only way you can do that is by taking responsibility for the emotions of it and work your way through it by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to need a lot of time by yourself to do that. If you're doing this in a relationship, you probably need to be out of the relationship for a while and work through this terrible feelings that you have about blaming the world for your pain. Yeah. Which is a very resentful feeling towards everyone in the world, including your partner. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to blame someone, blame the people who caused it. Uh, it's very irresponsible of you to blame anybody else. But if you're going to be angry, you can be angry for thousands of years like this. And you can be in suppressed depression for thousands of years too, by the way, mm -hmm. while you retain this kind of behaviour. My suggestion is get out of it as soon as you can because it's terrible for relationships, it's terrible for your own happiness, and it's also terrible because it creates a, soul, a degrading soul condition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is going to be very harmful for your future. Yeah. So, yeah, I just encourage people to get out of that state as soon as they possibly can. Yeah, yep. Mm. There's quite a lot of anger in that state, isn't there? Lots of anger yeah. in that state, whether it's passive-aggressive or aggressive, lots of yeah. anger in that state. Yeah. 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 Or suppressed, like depression, which is mm -hmm. very suppressed, passive-aggressive or aggressive anger. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, even people who are depressed are really severely angry. Yes. And... Uh, and a lot of it's because they're just living in the hurt, mm -hmm. not experiencing it, not expressing it. When I say expressing it, not feeling it for themselves, yeah. not, not experiencing it for themselves, wanting everyone around them to be responsible for it. For it, yeah. 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 Terribly destructive to a relationship. It is. Mm. It is. In fact, it makes a relationship almost impossible. Well, it? yes, unless the other person is in a severe condition of lack of self-love, yeah. a relationship will be impossible. Yeah. But if the other person is not is in a severe condition of lack of love, they'll tolerate that behaviour for many years, and I've seen people tolerate it for their entire life. Yeah. Uh, for religious reasons, mm -hmm. not not. They, you know, they can't tolerate their relationship, but they stay in the relationship for religious reasons, believing mm -hmm. that they are doing God's will or, you know, yeah. that they made their bed, they have to lie in it or, yeah. or that, you know, marriage is, they married the person and now they've got to pay for that the rest of their life. Completely untrue. Yeah. All of these things are completely untrue. But that's the main motivations for people to stay in those kind of relationships. Yeah. They yeah. don't stay because they love the person. No. Because by that time, all semblance of love has disappeared. Yeah. 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 Okay. So living in our hurt is severely detrimental. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a lot of points there about why it's so. Yes. That's the end of our session, session today. today, session four. Mm. So we've covered a lot of good, uh, bad habits. Good bad habits. Good bad habits <laughs> to avoid. <laughs> we've covered many bad habits to avoid if you want to have a good Good relationship. relationship. Yeah. yeah. And these bad habits have the effect of ruining any kind of possibility for having a good relationship. Yeah. And that's why they're so important to address personally. So these bad habits are personal, individual bad habits. Mm -hmm. They are things that exist within oneself. We need to address them within ourselves. If both parties have a desire to address our own individual bad habits, then we have a hope of having a great relationship. Yeah. But if both parties or one party decide to avoid addressing these bad habits, then it's going to be put a lot of strain on our relationship. And it's going to be, and by the way, we're not asking our two primary questions or our four supplementary questions if we do this. Yes. And we're certainly not living in harmony with humility, love, truth, and, and the proper use of our will when yeah. we do this. Yeah. So, so what can we expect? Of course, we're going to have a bad relationship. Yeah. So if you want to have a good relationship, my suggestion is, Avoid these bad habits. <laughs> when I say avoid them, I don't mean to ignore them. Mm. I mean to deal with them, address them, feel them emotionally, work through the issues, take, you know, treat each other as friends and work through each one of these bad habits that each of you have individually. You might not be able to see your own bad habits and you might be able to see some of your, your partner's bad habits. Work through that. You know, and if you can't see, both of you can't see your bad habits, you're in your codependent addiction, work through that with God. But you desperately need to do it. Otherwise, your relationship will not be good for a long period of time if it survives at all. Yeah. 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 So we'd like to thank everyone for their time today and, uh, 
and thank the guys be, who have been filming us all day and switching <laughs> back and forward between our often uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, rapid <laughs> rapid fire conversations yeah. <laughs> and uh, we hope you've enjoyed our session and the next time we get together with these sessions of um, on partner relationships we are probably going to start dealing more with uh, issues with regard to children and breakups of relationships and then we'll start looking at individual questions that people have asked us about their personal relationships yeah <laughs> thanks for your time guys